Unlock the full potential with your business with Leadershipity. Our proven strategies have fueled growth for countless organizations. Ready to elevate your leadership and scale your success? Book your free 15-minute consultation now. Click the link in the show notes below and let's make your business soar. I like to tell athletes, choose about four categories that you think that would make a good fit. And so the natural ones, Rob, are your sport. If you're on the crew team, stay around things in your sport. There are so many companies that support crew. There are so many vendors. There are equipment companies, clothes, manufacturers. There are tons of things that are going around. So stay around the niche that you live in where people know you for. Second is, what are you studying? If you're studying criminal justice, you know, start looking at things around the criminal justice area because that puts you in front of meeting people and networking with people that you're going to probably want to meet when you graduate anyway. So what a great way to build relationships now in the NIL space. You know, we just saw a young lady who wants to be in fashion. She had two NIL deals in the fashion world. And pretty nice way to put out your resume when the two chief marketing officers of two significant fashion brands are on her resume coming out of college where you're not supposed to have any experience yet. And they're like, wow, uh, love to call her. Like, hey, I worked with her for a year when she was playing volleyball at yada yada university, right? So it's pretty awesome. And so you want to think about that. The third and fourth things are probably things you're passionate about and probably pretty good at, whether that be fashion, cooking, exercise, and working out. That's a pretty low hanging fruit for athletes because you're going to do a lot of it. So it's pretty easy to create user-generated content and social media because you're in a gym a lot. Welcome to NIL for You podcast, brought to you by Alumni Direct and AIM NIL Academy. I'm Rob Finkelstein, founder and CEO of Alumni Direct, where we've created a platform to help athletes Another alumni network and connect to their alumni groups. And I'm so excited to have my co-host on here, Trent Clark. Hey, everybody. I'm thrilled to be here as well. CEO of AIM NIL Academy and just excited about talking NIL with you today, Rob. Yeah, me too. I mean, we've started this show to, it's all about education. There's a lot going on in the NIL space and we've created different topics. We cover headlines. We cover NIL for good. We cover different, having great guests on it today. We don't have any great guests, but we'll share some great information. So uh, Trent, why don't you start us off today? All right, well, let's start with some headlines. Rob just ripped from the today events and things that are going on. How about this one to start out? Johnny Manziel, if NIL was around in 2014, the story potentially ends differently. What's your thoughts? I mean, we, we all know a lot of things have gone on with Johnny Manziel. Uh, tell me what you think and tell me a little bit about what, what he's saying here. Well, you know, I love Johnny football, right? I just think the guy, you know, I loved watching this guy play in college. I mean, actually rooting for him in Cleveland. He's a shorter side. He came in in the league as a guy who wasn't the prototype guy at 6'4 now, 6'5, whatever they want guys now. So, I really was rooting for this guy as such a big hype out of college. I would tell you, Rob, you know, obviously I'm in the sports world a lot and I can't tell you how many pro friends I've had who have like, when I was in college, I would have made a hundred million. Like, Hey man, like whatever, right? Like this is a tough world out there. There are only dollars. Like you got to hustle to make money in NIL. You know, these people who just think it's going to find you and drop into your lap. I think this guy definitely would have probably netted a million plus Texas football, no doubt. But like the story potentially ends differently. I think that the story maybe goes off the rails earlier for this guy. You know, you hand a 19 year old kid two, three million dollars and he's in college and he's just scoring and winning games every Saturday. I don't know if it ends any better. It's definitely an interesting speculation. But that rearview mirror in hindsight, everybody wants to talk about what could have been, I think. Yeah, and I think that with his personality, right, it could have derailed pretty quickly. I mean, it's, uh, and that's why we're, you know, here on this podcast talking about education, because a lot of these athletes, 
you know, when it starts getting into mental health and financial literacy, there's a lot of challenges there. And NIL brings a lot out of that. And, and you have somebody with his personality. Yeah, he probably would have done great. But, you know, what would have been the after effects? And it might have been you know, potentially worse than what it is today. Yeah, without a doubt. Let's jump to headline number two I pulled. I think I pulled this. <laughs> there yeah, go. I was going to say, it looked, it looked fantastic to start with. But, uh, <laughs> uh, Louisville NIL Collective signs women's basketball and the volleyball teams. Talk about that. I love it. I think that this is awesome. You know, major institution. Louisville has a uh, great athletic environment down there. You know, I think they have 9,000 plus season ticket holders for the women's basketball program. Uh, their volleyball is consistently a, a national competitor. They really have a unique athletic campus. And we've seen signs of great baseball teams. We've seen signs of, you know, good football teams, obviously, with their former quarterback who's vied for the NFL MVP honors, right? So the sports are big. It's nice to see the collectives now getting involved more with some of the female sports, not just the big marquee men's basketball, men's football. So that's a pleasant surprise. Well, I was going to say, w w one thing that's come across to me, and I, I know we talked about this offline a little bit on one of my other podcasts that I do, uh, talking about athletes transitioning out of sports. I was talking to one of uh, my guests, and we, we talked about the fact of being kind of a team effort. And maybe you know, most of these deals we hear about are the star players, but how do you think it affects when you have more of a team effort kind of spread out across the whole team like that and how that might help them interact better and, and maybe eliminate potentially some of the jealousies that are out there? Yeah, I think, I think there's a risk of always running that jealousy if somebody's getting, you know, some big numbers and some big things going on. But typically the numbers are tied to popularity, social media follower numbers. So there's some work that goes into that without a doubt. So, you know, I think if people are getting upset about the popularity thing, it's kind of on their own. You know, I, I take this thing back to skateboarding. One thing I love about the Tony Hawk era is a bunch of young men and women who are cheering each other on. You know, someone makes a great play and they're tapping their skateboard. And, you know, Rob, if you get a, a $150,000 contract with a shoe, that's probably good for all of us. And eventually that's going to come into the sport and it's good. So, you know, I think there's a little bit of time to check your ego at the door. We, our agency and education group run into this directly. We have a couple young lady athletes that we work at, with at Michigan State and they have both been benefited. I think the Michigan State University Credit Union is worked with women's basketball and I think they're going on their second year on that campaign. And then the mortgage company that was highly involved in uh, Michigan State Athletics had a very good uh, opportunity and program with the women's volleyball program last season. And I think they pulled out of that now because that owner is now the son's owner. So he cannot be directly paying money into college sports. So I think he's had to separate from that, which is probably too bad for some of the female athletes. But the great thing is people like that are pioneering opportunities for the women and they're seeing there's going to be a lot of benefit from it. So I think it's great that he laid the foundation for that. And I think the women are just going to pick that up because the organizations and companies are going to see the value. And I think there's going to be more of it. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, that, that's great. So what do we got next? Next, let's talk a little bit about the PASS Act. We touched briefly on this last week, and man, this thing's brought in by some senators. Let's talk about this headline. Yeah, PASS Act aims to protect athletes' integrity of college sports. Like I said, we talked about it last week. There's a lot going on. People talk about NL being the wild, wild west. So talk about your feelings on uh, you know what these senators are trying to do and how it's going to affect this. Yeah, I think there's a really a lot of good things in this bill. I mean, I think there's a lot of things that are very positive. I don't like the way that's positioned. It's as if there's already the integrity's gone in sports. And that's not good. We're running into some things today. I know there's a headline this week on the Iowa State, some insider bets that were going on in a game with two in-state rivals, Reese, you know, which is a huge game in the state and, and really in the Midwest. It's very well known as a big 
rivalry game and so it gets a lot of TV time. So you're going to keep seeing this and this integrity in quotes is concerning to me because there's a lot of temptation now for these kids. There's a lot of things that are put in front of their plate and hey, don't worry about this. Nobody's looking, you know, and I think it's been going on a long time in college sports before pro. And so it, it's hard to maintain that. And I think that walking some line and getting some better boundaries around this to aid the NCAA, aid the athletes, aid the coaching staff, aid the people that are around it makes a lot of sense. The fact that our government has to run that is probably not good in my opinion. <laughs> like, I don't know if they're the ones to run it, but I appreciate the bill being presented. It'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. What's your thought from a congressional involvement now in college athletics? I, I think, like you said, it's, it, it could be a little worrisome. Uh, I think everybody just needs to come together. There's just a lot of issues with it. And I think um, NIL can definitely be a great thing, but you know, definitely a need for education. Some of the things that you, know, you do with your, your organization is that we just need to better educate the athletes. But you know, I also hear, too, that um, it's not only the athletes that struggle, it's, it's the colleges, too. I was talking to uh, one person. They just said it's actually a couple of different universities. They're just really concerned with it because it's something that the coaches don't necessarily understand. The athletes might not understand it. So I guess if you can put, to your point, the boundaries, and it's going to really help out. Yeah, I think one of the things that really sticks out in this, and you bring a great point, the education's hard, and it's going fast, so it's ever-changing. The other thing that really stuck out was the parents. The parents are, they don't know information. You know, the recruiting agents, they've come down to the high school level to help families navigate all these moving parts of the NCAA and college athletics, I think have been huge value. A uh, little shout out to, you know, the NCSA and some of the groups out there that are doing a great job. And we've got a number of partners in that that work with us because they want to make sure their families get educated. So always been thrilled, work with a group out of Texas that I just love. And that to me is a big deal. There's a lot of things. And we had a discussion offline today with another financial provider and Dustin Eldridge. He'll be on next Friday. And, you know, Dustin was talking about the financial aid, right? We all go in and we apply for financial aid. And man, it's what the NIL impact could mean to a college athlete who already has some financial aid and then makes some NIL money and then no longer qualifies and how detrimental that could be. And so really navigating these moving parts. And uh, this is definitely about business ownership. And I just don't know too many 18, 19 year old kids who know a lot about business ownership, if that's fair. Yeah. And then, they, like you said, too, then the parents, you know, might not necessarily either. So it's just, uh, it's definitely an issue. And I think, you know, hopefully more and more people get out there on the education side will we'll definitely make it better. So one of the things that we talk about a lot is helping others and giving to others. And the next thing we wanted to cover uh, there's a, a professional golfer out there. He pledged uh, $1,000 per birdie to be given to the relief funds uh, from his uh, native uh, state, Hawaii. And uh, I think this is something, it's a great lesson and it's going to, it will parlay into our next uh, segment when we talk a little bit about NAL and what um, athletes can do. But Trent, talk a little more about, you know, your thoughts on on what he's doing and, and how he's being a role model to others. Yeah, I'm really impressed with uh, young Morikawa, you know, been on the tour a while. He's uh, won a major you know, he's a Japanese born, but spent time in Hawaii, had a grandfather that owned a restaurant in Lahaina uh, or Lahana. I'm not sure how I say that for years right there on the island. And the thing's wiped out the whole fire. It's, it's gone. And, you know, just to see uh, an athlete stepping up in this, uh, you know, the FedEx Cup is going on highly competitive event. And meanwhile, I'm sure he's dealing with a lot of family that are, are really in disarray and misplaced and everything else that's going on on the island. So what an opportunity to raise up athletics and raise awareness around and help. And we've just seen the athletes do that for years. Obviously, I was in pro sports when Katrina hit New Orleans and the way athletes rallied and raised funds for New Orleans. And I think it's the way America's supposed to be, come alongside and help one another. And 
you know, and I think there's tons of opportunities for kids at the athlete level in college. And what a great opportunity to get kids involved at a young age. I, I know that when I was a kid, my parents really supported us in the Jerry Telethon, the, the 24-hour Jerry Telethon. And we went out and we sold lemonade every year on that day. And, you know, we were so excited to go deliver $78 to Jerry's telethon. You know, like whatever we made, you know, selling, you know, for a dime. I mean, we pumped and worked out there all day. And Jerry Lewis, you know, he, he walked in there. It's 11 o'clock. There's, you know, eight hours to go. <laughs> he got bags under his eyes. and But it was a first lesson in like, hey, you know, it's not about you all the time, right? and others centered and others first is a pretty good way to be a really good team member. And when pro athletes shine on that, I think that filters down and you're involved with a network that really does this well. Why don't you speak to that some Rob? Yeah, sure. Uh, so sports philanthropy network, uh, it's all about building uh, healthier, more inclusive communities. And uh, they're one of our sponsors of this great segment NL for good. And then kind of, we just alluded to, we talked from a professional standpoint, but uh you know, we like to share stories on what some of these college athletes, and even high school athletes. I actually had one person uh, on my uh, other podcast, and she talked about how she did different efforts to for her community. They needed to build some new softball fields, and so it, you know, it could be money, it could be food, it could be something like that to you know fields and equipment. But um, what we'd like to do is, is share a couple things. So uh, thank you to Sports Philanthropy Network for sharing these segments where uh, they had a couple uh, young college students talk about what they would do with uh, their NIL money. Hi, my name is Alex Jean Glover. I go to SMU and I play volleyball and I'm originally from Houston. I would love to use my NIL to support Big Brother Big Sister. I love them so much. I supported them when I was modeling in high school and I also served as a mentor for them when they had lawyers in to study NIL. I love the cause and everything that they do and I just love supporting people. So thank you. So uh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was great from Alex. Uh, shout out to her. Uh, any thoughts there, uh, Trent? Well, worth hearing twice. Here's a yeah, young yeah. lady who started early, got involved with Big Brothers, Big Sisters, fabulous organization. And she's like, man, I'm committed, right? I started making money modeling in high school, was able to do that. Uh, you know, if you're if you're from a state that doesn't allow that currently, you aren't allowed to keep that NIL money, name, image, likeness, and then go become an athlete. You could be deemed ineligible. So what a great way to use resources. Super exciting. And this young lady who's a Texas girl, obviously born and bred with Houston, which is so great. And then she's just right over at Southern Methodist U, right? So two great uh, cities. And there's a lot of philanthropy going on in all the big cities. So I just love the, and you feel the enthusiasm <laughs> that she has for this organization. I see a lot of athletes who are are now giving back. And I don't know if Alex was, but a lot of kids are giving back to the programs that helped them when they were kids and they were a part of. And I don't know if she was in Big Brothers, Big Sisters when she was younger, but what a great opportunity to come full circle. And I'm on, I'm on a board with uh, Todd Martin the uh, former you know, pro tennis player and also the executive director of the Tennis Hall of Fame. And Todd is served youth in his community for years. And we have just got to the point where a young man is coming on our board who was in the program as a young boy. And, you know, now gone through university. He's a he has a degree in fundraising and really helping out. And he built that all because he saw people care for the programs that he was involved and helped him and his family get through some tough times and provide an outlet and things. So I just think like, man, that starts early. And when you see folks doing this, it gives me goosebumps. It gives me fired up. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it, it's great. You're right. I think uh, anytime when these, uh, you know, some of these people, when they think back to their roots and they want to get back into the organizations, uh, that they were involved with. You hear a lot of stories like that. Like you said, the boys club, girls club, the different things out there. Uh, so kudos to Alex. So our, our next one, we're going to travel now to the Northeast. 
Hi, my name is Acacia Lofton. I am a rising junior business administration major at Clark Atlanta University. I'm from Northern Virginia. And the cause that I'm most passionate about would be financial literacy, specifically in the Black community. As an HBCU student, it's more than important to me to educate the people who look like me and just make sure that we are financially literate, know how to deal with our money, our finances, because I think that is super important. And just being an adult in this society, everything's super expensive. So we need to know how to deal with it. Thank you. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, she seemed mature beyond her years. And it's, uh, you know, I know that's something that you do a lot with uh, uh, trend in this NIL space, the, the whole financial literacy. And like you mentioned, we're going to have a, a great guest on uh, next week talking about that. But uh, yeah, give me some of your thoughts on uh, what she just said. Well, first of all, I love it. Like, you know, this is a commitment from a young lady to her neighborhood, to her culture, to the college and, and giving back and saying, Hey, this is something that has helped me and I want to help other people do it too. And so why wouldn't we be doing this to lift other people up, man? And, and to me, it's pulling people up. You know, I see a lot of people who run the stairs up top and they're like, Hey, I'm headed for the top. I'm going to make it. But this is a young lady who runs two steps and turns around and gives a hand to someone and says, Hey, come on up with me. Let me pull you up too. And this is what it's all about, raising people. And so what a cool thing for her to give back. And you can feel, again, you know, when it's on your heart, you just hear the passion. You hear the enthusiasm for where people want to spend their time and efforts. And I don't know if it feels like a bunch of work when you just know in your heart you're doing well for other people and helping. Yeah, I mean, that's, again, the whole NIL for good. That's what it's all about. And you know, we'll continue each week to have different stories, uh, maybe even having some uh, live interviews with some of these folks that just doing some great things in their community. And it's, uh, again, kudos to her and, and just, you know, all these young athletes and people out there that are trying to make a difference in their communities. Yeah, a little special shout out to Kayla Bradham. We, we ripped those from Kayla's Instagram account. She's one of the directors over at Sports Philanthropy Network. And uh, really, really uh, a spearhead of that NIL for Good program. So special shout out to Kayla. A lot of good stories over there on her IG account. And you can find them everywhere. And if you are thinking about having an NIL for Good campaign for yourself, I highly recommend Rob Finkelstein here right here. He can connect you. But definitely reach out to Kayla Bradham and and the Sports Philanthropy Network and make something happen there. Because I think it'd be really, really awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we usually talk about the next big segment. We talk about education. And uh, you know, I think today just maybe want to cover just a couple things on it, Trent, maybe some uh, tips that you can give. And, you know, there's so much involved and we've kind of covered on the show today talking about, again, the financial literacy and maybe one area that, that you might give some advice on because this becomes a big topic too, is social media because social media has just become, obviously, it's a great part of NIL and you need to have it. But there's also the way to properly manage it. And I think there's definitely, you know, we've all seen some failures out there over the years of some of these different athletes that kind of ended up in some cases ruining their careers. Why don't you give some advice and talk a little bit about how you educate athletes on uh, social media? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think one thing we have like courses, you know, for social media. And I think one of the things I'll share here is a little bit of the foundation of these courses that kind of come in and this is like our bronze course where we're defining the NIL for what that is for athletes, for parents, for coaches, for the athletes themselves, like what that means and what it doesn't mean too. Probably most important, what it doesn't mean is you can't be paid for performance, right? I can't go like, hey, listen, you'll give me a hundred dollars for every basket I score. And like that is not how it works, right? There is no pay to play here. But you know, I think the early education of getting a corporate structure, because if you're going to be in the NIL business, it's really about, you're now a little entrepreneur and you're going to build a brand yourself. And, you know, this is one of the things I, I really would have loved to see in pro sports. I would love to see that Trent Clark LLC could sign a pro contract where it wasn't W2 employment and my, and my corporation could be contracted by the team for services, because there's a lot of different structures I could do inside that. And so this is a really cool way to do it. Learning that compliance at your college is so important. You've got to get this right. A misstep can cost you a year, a scholarship, or worse, expulsion, no longer any eligibility, all these big things. So compliance is so important. 
Well, you know, one of the things I want to spend some time today is, uh, is on NIL opportunities. And NIL opportunities are everywhere. And I'm going to bring this home with your program, with Alumni Direct, which is, you know, you have two centers of opportunities immediately as an athlete. And that's at the basis. And that is one, your hometown, because you're the hometown athlete going good. And now you've received and you're playing a college sport somewhere else. And now that's a new network and audience that is available to you. And so both of those cities have entrepreneurs, have organizations that would like nothing more than to support a young college athlete working their tail off, playing sport, going to school, doing the thing. And so a lot of these opportunities are going to fall close to home. People that you know, or more importantly, people that know you. There may be people that you don't know today, but they know you. They've read your articles about how your performances have been and what humanitarian award this young lady won and all those things. And so they know you. And now you're going to start meeting people that you may not know, but they know you. And so it's an opportunity to spread an ambassador type role for a brand that would like to align with you. And so those opportunities are going to come in in what category? I like to tell athletes choose about four categories that you think that would make a good fit. And so the natural ones, Rob, are your sport. If you're on the crew team, stay around things in your sport. There are so many companies that support crew. There are so many vendors. There are equipment companies, clothes, manufacturers. There are tons of things that are going around. So stay around the niche that you live and where people know you for. Second is what are you studying? If you're studying criminal justice, you know, start looking at things around the criminal justice area because that puts you in front of meeting people and networking with people that you're going to probably want to meet when you graduate anyway. So what a great way to build relationships now in the NIL space. You know, we just saw a young lady who wants to be in fashion. She had two NIL deals in the fashion world. And Pretty nice way to put out your resume when the two chief marketing officers of two significant fashion brands are on her resume coming out of college where you're not supposed to have any experience yet. And they're like, wow, uh, love to call her. Like, hey, I worked with her for a year when she was playing volleyball at Yada Yada University, right? So it's pretty awesome. And so you want to think about that. The third and fourth things are probably things you're passionate about and probably pretty good at whether that be fashion, cooking, exercise, and working out. That's a pretty low-hanging fruit for athletes because you're going to do a lot of it. So it's pretty easy to create user-generated content and social media because you're in a gym a lot. And so that's an easy way. But uh, I know one of our athletes makes a ton of cooking stuff. She makes great stuff. She's talking about the values of nutrition to keep her going and how valued that fuel is as an athlete. So she's doing both great education on the food side and then great education on the athlete side and how it serves her. So there's just a, a great little deal there. And then, you know, uh, a fourth one can be something, you know, around a hobby, scrapbooking, you know, hey, uh, we, we do travel. We pick out, this is how we do our holiday travel. And look how my family chooses, uh, each family rotates every year and we rotate and we pick a, an Airbnb or a, uh, VRBO house and our whole family meets for the holidays here and our family's in charge. And this is how we go through that. Like, that's cool. And so you can align with travel companies who want to support you in that. And what we really want to educate people on the opportunities is they're everywhere. Small deals are okay. I, I think people are like, oh, wow, they only want to pay me $250 a month. Hey, just to square that up, that's $3,000 a year right? Like 250 a month, which I love a monthly recurring revenue, what we call MRR. Get out there and get yourself educated and get some MRR deals. I mean, young person doing four deals at $500 a month with four, four companies, that's $2,000 or $24,000 a year. That's a lot of money. I never made $24,000 when I was in college. Right? So I'm like going, Hey, all right. So there are a lot of ways to choose your opportunities and a great place to do is learn how to network. And I want Rob, I want you to speak to this a little bit, but you know, I play a game when I network. I want to go into the alumni association when I'm having a meeting, get down there. I, I want to do some pre-work to find out 
who maybe are the top donors in the organization that I'd need to meet, maybe know a little bit about their businesses, which by the way, is all available on LinkedIn and come in there with a plan. Like I don't love going to parties and going, oh, I want to meet 20 new people, but I make a game out of that. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to leave when I've got my 20th introduction on LinkedIn to somebody. And I take my little LinkedIn QR code and I meet them and I'm like, hey, you think we could connect on LinkedIn? Boom, we're connected. And now I got 20 follow-up emails to make the next week to these impactful people that are definitely going to be potential NIL opportunities. Not Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but maybe next year, this is a real opportunity and they see the value and they start following you. And Here's the thing about big donors. Big donors have big companies, right? And so when you mention, oh, I met this donor last night over here at this company. Oh, look at the company. I tagged your company page and said, what a great time I had meeting the owner. It turns out this company has 2.5 million followers on their company page. They reshare the post and I just picked up 20,000 followers. Like that's a great way to build your network and your brand. So we're trying to create opportunities and it can be very organic. To round this out, you know, creating content, generating influence, engagement, and earnings is really a big deal. We talk about uh, structures and strategies, the many benefits to you as a student athlete with NIL. I mean, probably the biggest one is the many skill sets you'll learn. And with athletes graduating, getting out there and having customer service, brand building, marketing, sales. I mean, you just keep going on and time management is at the top of the list. And if athletes get this right, I see them at the top 1% of all college graduates coming out, putting them at the top of a heap for opportunity in the workforce, careers, and, and possibly entrepreneurship themselves who want to keep going on and enjoy ownership. So then of course, Kind of flipping this back to you is it's so important early to build your network, to build a great AIM profile landing page, build a great LinkedIn page. It's never too early to start your professional career. You're an adult now, and this is where you need to tie into your alumni and how alumni direct to me becomes so important. So with that, that's kind of rounds out our Browns foundation of how people start building their NIL company. And it only gets more advanced from there, right? So talk to the folks, Rob, about Alumni Direct and like really starting to understand how my network is really going to serve me and a couple of things that you've seen with your company. Yeah, thanks. And, uh, you know, it's just super, just great nuggets that you provided to everybody there. And uh, I think one, one of the things I took away when you were talking about just finding things that they should do. It's all about passion. You know, what are you passionate about? And I continue to hear that as I talk to people. But when it, when it comes to networking, connecting, it's it's so critical. And I think it's something that could even start at high school age. We're just getting to know whether it's your your friends, your friends' parents, people in the community. And like you said, it, it's sometimes it's not necessarily, in this case, you know, who they know. It might be who knows them. I mean, there's always different things with that. But I've talked to player agents and they've said the best times to network and connect is when you're playing, which kind of illustrates what you're just saying. So, I mean, when you're in high school or college or even professionally and you're playing that sport, when people know you, that's the time that you need to be building these these uh, relationships with people. And that's the key is the relationships. You have to build relationships. And that starts with uh, having that giving spirit as well. You want to help other people too. People are, are willing to help you know others that help them. So from an alumni direct perspective is that we're looking at, college, junior, seniors, but more importantly, once people graduate, just helping out alumni. I always talk about, uh, you know, in my market, I went to University of Delaware and being about 1,200 miles away from the university in South Florida, anytime I meet a Delaware alumni, it's like, how can I help? And just, it's kind of cool. And so yeah. I think people are willing to help and you need to reach out to that alumni network and, and work together. So that alumni network, it could be College alumni, it could be, you know, in the future as you're working, maybe you worked at a place and just alumni from there. It could be fraternities, sororities, or you know, the, the big things, obviously, uh, that we're talking about is athletes. You've got athletes share that same DNA, and there's so many athletes out there. And, you know, one of the things we have an athlete community center for collegiate athletes and beyond to, to be in there. And it, it's pretty cool when you have you know, former NFL players that might be 
networking, connecting with Olympic swimmers or college wrestlers or golfers. It's it's all people working together for that common cause. How can they help each other with their businesses? How can they help each other get jobs? So we encourage tapping into these networks. And that's what we're all about with Alumni Direct is creating these communities uh, where people can do all these things. So uh, I encourage it uh, to go out to Alumni Direct and just in general, just talk to people and help people and work together. It's just such a critical thing to network and connect with people and build it out and build those relationships. Yeah, that is so good. And I, I want to add to one point that you're a couple points, really. And when you're in it is so important and it's important to be in what you're in. I mean, you don't lose focus on what you're doing, but you know, a lot of people are so hyper-focused on the moment they're missing opportunities to really develop the next step. Not that you need it today, but it's developing relationships. I worked very hard with that with the Los Angeles Angels. I did much better my last seven years in professional baseball than I did my first seven years, right? Where I was a Detroit Tiger. I was young. I'm trying to make an impression. And, you know, I worked all day and had very little time for fans or or tying in. With Cleveland, I did a little bit better. Cleveland had a very good community that was very supportive to the team. So I tried. And, and my first step in that, Rob, was attend all the events. Like if we're going to have a, a fanfare, if we're going to have this, I volunteered for everything. I'll make an appearance. I'll go talk to the schools. I'll do this. Like get my name in the market and start meeting people. That was really, really good. And, and let me just tell you a big thing that what you just said is so important. When I called any important, if I wanted to talk to the CEO of Firestone and I said, hey, this is Trent Clark with the Cleveland Indians. I'm wondering if I could get the CEO of Firestone. I don't know, Mr. Clark. Hold on just one moment. Let me see if I could get him. <laughs> Wait, what? Now, if I say, hey, it's Trent Clark with AIM, the NIL Academy. Yeah, who? Uh, I'm not interested. Uh, he's, he's, he's got to take a message. Might call you back. Don't know. And if I get a call back at all, it may be from you know someone in the marketing department. Like, I don't know what this person wants. Maybe you can find out, right? And so, but the entry was they knew me as a coach with the Cleveland Indians. I may not know him, but I know of him. And I know certainly that brand. And so it's, hey, this is entry level. When you're active in the big organization, this is when you really want to peak. And so like, that's why we so much encourage that LinkedIn, get there started. Because you know when you're talking about alumni direct, you're going to come out and go, hey, I've got 4,000, 6,000, 9,000 people now I've connected in the career world of LinkedIn, which everybody thinks is for their mom or dad at that age, right? But now it's for you and you don't need that today, but now you jump out and go, wow, I've just paired that with 400 people I know in Alumni Direct. Like, how about this? I've already got some relationships and now we're going to build on that, like unbeknownst to them that it's already there. And so I think that's a really critical step. So that's a great point, Rob, that people need to hear now, not like, oh, I wish I would have done that. Yeah, and I, th I think one other thing that I was talking about too is sometimes the flip of it. It's, it's not necessarily who that person is, but it's who they know. And so like, as you build these relationships with people, you don't know who they know. So let's go back to even to your example, the CEO, you, know, you might have a friend that you work with, a friend that you play a sport with, and they might know that CEO that you want to get to. And so if, if you've got that relationship with them and you're working together, they're going to be more than helpful to make that introduction for you. So always be good about that. And like you said too, Tri, I love it about making it the game. I mean, for me, it's fun too. I always, I don't believe in the six degrees of separation, you know, for Kevin Bacon is just more, you know, I, I want to do one degree. I want to challenge myself each time when I'm talking to somebody and find something that we have in common that we can talk about and, and work together on. Yeah, I'll tell you how I use that, that separation. This is a great point that you're making, Rob, because I actually use this in my business world. I have a parameter set on LinkedIn for a search of people that fit my parameter for one of our businesses, right? And we're always trying to connect with people in that space. So we have some parameters that we've set in. And so when I found 50 people that fit that parameter, I reached out to all 50 people and let's say 35 of them connected with me. 
Yeah, thank you. So maybe the 15 didn't get it. Maybe they just didn't want to connect with me. I don't know. Right? So like, hey, I get it. You know, like whatever. Now, I was alerted a week later. Hey, you have 150 new people that fit your parameter. Because wow. 35 each had almost five people that fit yeah. the parameter. Because guess what? Birds of a feather flock together, right? They're all going yeah. in the same direction. Sure. So they stay together. So if they're all basket weavers, or they're all CEOs, or they're all marketing directors, or they're all in criminal justice, guess what? You just got a network of a new 150 people in criminal justice that you didn't know. And because you connected with decision makers in criminal justice, these 35, they just opened up to 150 now that fit your criteria of other criminal justice decision makers. And now you have a feasible 180 people possible that might just hire you out of college. So this is how networking works. And so I'm, I'm so glad you brought that. And, and I do think the important point that we cannot forget is do not worry about you knowing them. And I recall this as a kid, you know, a lot of people when I was young and professional baseball, man, I remember people walking away from meeting me and go, man, I guess it's all who you know. <laughs> And I was like, man, I'm like 23. I don't know anybody. Like, and I, I would stop him and say, oh, no, no, no. It's who knows you. Because the reason I got opportunity was because Nick Saban knew me. Right. And it's not that he just knew me. He knew me to be a hardworking guy. He knew that I was reputable, that if he put his name on the line for me, I wasn't going to tarnish his reputation in any way. And I would go do my job and work hard. So when these people know you, as a hardworking athlete, that's the only way they may know you. They may not know you as a, a brother or a mom or whatever you are, but they're referring and know you because they've seen you, they may like you, and they may follow you. And so they feel like they do know you, and that's okay. And if you keep that reputation, that's a big deal. Yeah, for sure. So uh, th this has been great, Trent. We appreciate all you listeners out there and viewers. Keep following the show. We're going to continue to have great content every week. And uh, thank you so much. This has been NIL for you. Until next time, we'll see you next Friday. See you.